guest distribution ordinances 2016, the incorporation of petrols to actively participate in oil and gas industry in Sarawak, preparation for the financial review on Article 112D of the Federal Constitution, submission of claim for stamp duties chargeable on instrument for land dealing, and amendment to the Territorial Sea Act 2012, and securing from the British National Archive relevant historical document to support the state government position on these issues. Before this move, that this House hereby resolve that this House hereby mandate the state government to form a high-level special task force to negotiate with the federal government to resolve all outstanding issues related to the compliance and upholding of the constitutional safeguard and special right accorded to the state of Sarawak in accordance with the terms, intent and spirit of the Malaysian Agreement 1963. Dato' Amas Speaker, on 16 September 2017 in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah, the Prime Minister Yang Maha Hormat Datuk Petinggi Muhammad Najib bin Tun Abdul Razak reassured Sabah and Sarawak that they will be accorded their right as enshrined in the Malaysian Agreement 1963. This assurance is not just a political rhetoric. The federal government has responded positively to Sarawak initiative to regain our right under the Malaysian Agreement. This August House was informed of the headway achieved in the negotiation with the federal government by the late being Sri Adnan during his winding up speech on the 30th November 2016. This is also reflected through the exemption of Sarawak from Gas Supply Act and right to vetting of all deep sea fishing licenses over the deep sea within Sarawak EEZ. These are all implemented on the premises and recognition of the state right over its continental share together with the oil and gas and marine resources therein. Therefore, we record our appreciation to Yang Ma Prime Minister for his understanding and readiness to consider our appeal to regain and restore Sarawak rights. The Tuama Speaker, the IGC report on the safeguard for Sarawak and Sabah are part of the Malaysian agreement and have been incorporated into the federal constitution. For those safeguards which have not been included in the Constitution, Article 8 of the Malaysian Agreement provides that these are to be implemented through executive, legislative, and other action by the federal and the state government of Sabah and Sarawak. Dato' Omar Speaker, in December 2015, this August House passed a motion introduced by the Honorable Member for Bali to mandate the state government to take all necessary measures under the said Article 8 of the Malaysian Agreement for the complete implementation of all recommendations in the IGC report and safeguard of the special interest of the state and its people. Now, Thomas Speaker, after the motion, the state government has taken the measure toward the realization of the objective set out therein. While agreement has been reached on some issues, as has been announced and resolved through administrative action, some important constitutional and financial issues have yet to be satisfactorily resolved, which I will touch on in the later part of my speech. The Thomas Speaker, to reinforce the state position on these unresolved issues, the state government felt it is incumbent to gather as much documentary evidence to ensure that the state has a strong legal position to facilitate the negotiation with the federal government. In this respect, it was important to have sight of original copies of this document. They are only available in the British National Archive. We have procured certified authenticated copies of this important document. Thus, a team headed by the Honorable Assistant Minister and member of Osamaria was sent to London for these important purposes. It is without doubt that the state is now in a stronger negotiating position following the retrieval 
and confirmation of the availability of relevant equipment. Boundaries of Sarawak. Dato' Omar Speaker, the Sarawak Alteration of Boundaries Order in Council 1954 extended the boundary of the state to include the area of the continental shelf being the seabed and subsoil which lie beneath the high sea contiguous to the territorial waters of Sarawak. The British government in an official statement now with the British National Archive explained as follows. The right of a literal state to claim sovereignty over the seabed and subsoil adjacent to its coast in order to control the exploitation of the natural resources therein has become established recently in international practices. Accordingly, the boundaries of North Borneo, Sarawak and Brunei has been extended under the provision of the North Borneo Alteration of Boundaries Order in Council 1954. The Sarawak Alteration of Boundaries Order in Council 1954 and the Brunei Proclamation to permit the government of these territories to exercise jurisdiction over the exploitation of natural resources of the continental shelf adjacent to their coast. The status of the high sea or water above the continental shelf is not affected. Dato Amma Speaker, consequently, the boundary of Sarawak has and Malaysia Day has been clearly established under the Sarawak Alteration Boundary Order in Council 1954. These are the boundaries of Sarawak as and Malaysia Day. State boundary and its territorial integrity are protected by Article 1, 3 and 2P of the Federal Constitution. Britain determined the boundaries of Sarawak to safeguard the state right to all natural resources, including oil and natural gas in the continental shelf. The boundaries in the territories of the state cannot be altered by virtue of Article 2B of the Federal Constitution without the consent of the state to be expressed by a law passed by this August House. Dato Omar Speaker, the Sarawak government has been granting oil concession and mining leases for petroleum since the days of the Raja. Maps kept in a British National Archive produced in the 1930s demarcated, identified the areas of the seabed and subsoil of what is now the continental shelf of the state, which had been included in oil mining leases issued by the state for the exploration and exploitation of oil. This confirmed that even during the days of the Raja, Sarawak has been exercising jurisdiction over exploration and mining of oil or petroleum in offshore areas of the state. This August House has passed the Oil Mining Ordinance 1958 to regulate oil mining onshore and in the continental shelf of Sarawak. This ordinance has never been repealed even during period when emergency law was in operation. After the proclamation of emergency in 1969, Emergencies Essential Powers Ordinance No. 7 and 10 were promulgated under Article 150, Bracket 2 of the Federal Constitution, which have the effect of respectively reducing the limit of the state due to the waters and translocated the state boundaries to only 3 nautical miles from its coastline and extend the continental shelf Act 1966 and the Petroleum Mining Act 1966 to Sarawak. This federal act enabled the federal government to exercise jurisdiction over the continental shape of the state and to regulate the control of the exploitation of petroleum in the continental shape. The Thomas Speaker, the proclamation of emergency 1969 was announced by both Houses of Parliament in December 2011 and by virtue of Article 150, Bracket 7, or the Federal Constitution, the set emergency ordinance has ceased to have effect and the extension of the set act to Sarawak affected by the emergency essential powers ordinance number 10, 1969, also ceased to have effect. The constitutional authority over the issue of oil exploration or prospecting license and mining list continue to be vested in the set government under item 2C of the state list, the ninth schedule of the Federal Constitution 
and the world mining audit in 1958. In the 1970s, the differences between the state government and the federal government in respect of the right of the right to oil and gas offshore Sarawak was resolved in the national interest, irrespective of what the constitutional and the legal position were, and in a pending civil suit by the state against the federal government. In this respect, was dropped so that the Petroleum Development Act 1974 was passed. Under that act, the ownership and right of petroleum was vested in Petronas in return for 5% royalty payment to Sarawak which was regarded as payment of compensation for taking over a state property in the form of petroleum and gas, an unequivocal admission by the federal government of the state ownership of these natural resources over the state boundaries up to the continental chef as provided by the order in council. The Tuama Speaker Sarawak is a founder and member of the Federation, has always acted in the interest of Malaysia. Sarawak is committed and has made sacrifice in the national interest by granting Pratunas control and benefit from its valuable petroleum and natural resources in its continental shape and also on land. Consequently, Pratunas has been able to grant right or concession for the exploration, development and production of oil and gas in the continental shape. To many companies such as Petronas, Charigali, Nippon Oil, Shell, Mopi Oil, Mudavala Oil and Gas, Total, and so on. So, can companies are yet to be involved in any development and production of oil and gas in the continental ship. Sarawak so, government, being mindful of the aspirations of the people, has to ensure that Sarawak can have the opportunity to actively and meaningfully participate in both the upstream and mainstream and downstream aspect of the oil and gas industry in the state. Many Sarawakian and Sarawak companies today have the skill, experience and financial resources to be involved in or to invest in the oil and gas industry. For this reason, the state government has gas, had the gas division of dinner in 2016 passed by this August House and form patrols and readiness as a vehicle of set government to spearhead the state active involvement in all aspects of oil and gas industry. The board of patrols comprises a person who has vast experience in oil and gas industry. That all must be clear. The state government will like all parties involved in oil and gas exploration and production within its boundaries including Patronas, to comply with all the relevant state law, such as the oil mining ordinances and also the land code, with regard to the use and occupation of state land for their activity. The state government has never given, given any waiver to Patronas regarding the strict compliance with the state law. Therefore, since Patronas and its production sharing contractor have not obtained exploration or mining leases for petroleum, and according to well mining ordinance, a no title of permit to occupy state land, including the continental shape areas under the, under the land court, Patronas has to regularize the activities to comply with the state government will not jeopardize Patronas business or economic interest in Sarawak or acts against the national interest. Further, the state government at this stage does not wish to resort to the court to resolve these issues. As in 1970s, the state government desires to achieve an amicable solution whereby both federal and state government interests can be accommodated with due recognition of the state constitutional right over the continental shape and the natural resources and the seabed and subsoil within the state boundaries. And the federal government being having the state commitment to advance the national interest in the exercise of the state constitutional right over the natural resources of oil and gas found and produced within the state. Tutoracy Act 2012. Let's must speak up. The Tutoracy Act 2012 was passed without consultation with the state government, with, without securing the consent of the state government under Article 2B of the Federal Constitution 
that this law and the way have the effect of not throwing the boundaries of Sarawak by reducing it to tourists from 12 to 3 nautical months. According to the supplementary statement in the bill tabled in Parliament to enact this act, the reason for the law are 1. The emergency essential powers within the number 7, which reduce the limit of the water to only 3 nautical miles, have ceased to be in effect because of the announcement in 2011 of proclamation of emergency, pursuant to which this ordinance has been promulgated. And two, to implement the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, 1982, which, of which the Malaysian government has signed as a party. The features of this act, which adversely affect the state right, are one, in effect, it has the effect of altering the boundary of Sarawak, two, it intends to vest sovereignty over the seabed and subsoil in the Riyadh Putun Agong, who act on the advice of the Senate Cabinet. It restrict the tourist it restrict the tourist sea or water of the state to three nautical miles, whereas the width of the tourist sea claimed by the federal government okay. is twelve nautical miles. The map and other document in the British archive serve to confirm when Sarawak was colony, the territorial water already twelve nautical miles. That limit should not be reduced after Sarawak become independent. While it is accepted that Malaysia has the capacity under international law to claim sovereignty over its territory waters and land territory to protect the nation's sovereignty and security, such claims under the international law of convention cannot be a justification for the federal government to acquire the right to land, including the continent of the which legally belongs to the state. Otherwise, the implementation the convention and treaty could be used as a mechanism to acquire land of the state with a compliance with Article 83 of the Federal Constitution and to alter the boundary of the state. After the grant of independence to Sarawak on Malaysia Day by Britain and the transfer of sovereignty of the then, then colonial Sarawak to the, to the Federation by the British Crown, all land belong to the Crown become vested in the state and not the Federation. This is expressly provided by Article 47 of the Constitution. When the land court was passed by this August House during the colonial administration, all land in Sarawak were vested in the Crown, and the title issue were issued as land lease of Crown land. Crown is defined as the land court to mean the Crown in the right of Her Majesty government in Sarawak. The land court was modified in 1964 to comply with the Article 47 of the State Constitution, Constitution listing all Crown land on the state to become state land. A claim to sovereignty by the federal government would not justify a claim to the right of the seabed and subsoil in the continent itself within the boundary of Sarawak, as the continent itself was Crown land before the birth of Malaysia. Upon the coming of enforced of the set constitution on Malaysia Day by the reason by reason of Section 1 of the Malaysian Act 1963, when the state constitution came into force, all such land previously belonged to the Crown. Her Majesty Government of Sarawak become vested in the state government as a state land. It is unconstitutional for the federal government to claim right for the seabed and subsoil which are part of the state land by claiming us sovereignty thereof under the international law by enacting the Tutorial C Act 2012. <coughs> financial matters. The two must be clear. The federal government has agreed to have financial review as required under Article 112D of the Federal Constitution of the Special Grant, which the state is entitled under the Federal Constitution to receive from federal government and whether there should be any addition or substitution of the item or revenue assigned to the state under the 10th schedule of the federal constitution. The federal government has also agreed that the state claim relating to loss of revenue from import duties, such duties on petroleum products, claim relating to stamp duties for dealing in land, and other financial issues be considered in this financial review. This review, this review is long overdue. The state government is now making preparation for this review. Solution of outstanding issues. The two of our speaker, the state government desires that these important personal issues 
to be resolved amicably with that resulting fully connection so as not to jeopardize the unity of the Federation and the good relationship that exists between the Sarawak State Government and the Federal Government. When these issues are eventually resolved, our nation will be more united in relationship with the State Government and the Federal Government will remain harmonious. This negotiation between the State and the Federal Government should be conducted in accordance with the spirit and intent of the Agreement and the IGC report, which was subscribed to by all parties, leading to the formation of our beloved relationship. As correctly pointed out by the Honorable Dr. Sri Norman Nazi of the Aziz Minister and Prime Minister Department, as she was then tabling the tutorial C Bill 2012, Peter Merdeka pada tahun 1957. Kita sebagai satu unit, walaupun ada sebelas buah negeri, kita sebagai unit untuk dipanggil semenanjung tanah tadi. Kemudian pada tahun 1963, apabila kita menubuhkan negara Malaysia, di mana Sabah dan Sarawak sebenarnya merupakan dua wilayah, sejarah pun tidak sama. Akan tetapi, apabila Sabah dan Sarawak bersetuju bersama menubuhkan Malaysia, ada beberapa perkara yang telah dijadikan bersama supaya dia mesti diikuti. The State Government has always maintained that Sarawak and Sabah should not be treated as one to the State and the Federation, but as equal partners to the formation of Malaysia. The two Amman speaker in view of the above, the State Government supports that a high level special task force to be established to conclude the negotiation with the federal government and have the issue resolved in conformity with the legal and constitutional position of line by me in this speech. The resolution of these important legal and constitutional issues must be undertaken by the highest level at both federal and state level. Hence, the state government would humbly request the federal government to establish a corresponding task force so as to facilitate the resolution of this issue amicably and in the national interest with the state interest and right properly safeguarded and entrenched. The Tuama Speaker, the passing of this motion should not in any way be misinterpreted or construed to mean that the state is willing to sacrifice to jeopardize the continued existence of Malaysia as a nation. We respect and honor the decision of our past leaders for our beloved state to be part of Malaysia and we will always remain in Malaysia. Let there be no doubt about this fact. We will always uphold the sanctity of the spirit and the words of our state anthem. The Sarawak Dalam Malaysia, Aman Makno, Rahmat Tuhan Maha Esa. Kekalkanlah Sarawak bertuah teras perjuangan rakyat berjaya berdaulat. Datuk Amas Speaker, I beg.